Jumptron. I have returned from my mission. Now every young boy in Nebraska knows that if he gets a little too curious down there, severe blindness and furry palms will ensue. Magnificent Barbarilius. What you lack in a normal name, you make up in passion for our cause. The cycle of fear-mongering is almost complete. There is but one more young boy we must capture to turn the tides of war. Master, you don't mean it's too risky. We don't have to- Turn sun initiated one. It is a risk well worth taking. The time has come. <laughs> Back with your fiends. Back to the realm of Molestrian. Wow. That was really great in this movie. I don't remember being in. Oh. No! I am losing the fight! I'm going down! You know what I feel like talking about today? Fear-mongering! It never goes out of style. From Reefer Madness back in 1936 warning us of the dangers of the demon drug marijuana, to the Red Scare keeping us away from those evil commies who could be your next door neighbor, to even the news media today with its endless upon endless mountains of scare campaigns. Every day it seems something new is encroaching on you waiting to strike when you least expect it. Oh! Ah! Who are you? I'm Rich. Okay, could you get out of my house? Oh yeah, yeah. Anyways, that brings me to today's subject, the Chick Tract. For those of you that don't know, a Chick Tract is a short evangelical literary work created and published by American publisher Jack T. Chick. In short, they're a bunch of brief comics that warn about the folly of man and how to best avoid God's wrath. Now, it sounds silly enough, but this guy is prolific, selling over 750 million tracks via his publication. Gosh be damned, man, that's a lot of Jesus. Jack be nimble, Jack T. Chick, Jack be right in the pile of shit, you know what I'm saying? Okay. One track, though, was meant to stand out among the rest. The one, the only, the 1984 publication of Dark Dungeons. This one dealt with the dangers of playing Dungeons and Dragons and the satanic inclinations of those who worship the 20-sided die. I mean, come on, let's talk some sense, alright? We all know how dangerous Dungeons and Dragons is. Among the tabletop gaming community, Dark Dungeons became something of a cult classic, a cultural bookmarker of the lengths that people would go to demonize a simple hobby. So, what's this I have here, you may ask? Well, I'll tell you. Apparently, a group of filmmakers acquired the actual legitimate rights to make a film adaptation of the Dark Dungeons tract, and yes, Jack T. Chick put his stamp of approval on it himself. What else do I gotta say? It's gonna be a good one, and let's go. Oh, and there it goes. 200 damage to my DVD player for reading the data on this goddamn disc. So, our film begins as a secret council discusses how it has been plotting to bring more and more innocent youths to the dark side. Evil will reign, and we will bring it forth in the flesh. Astrology and tarot card sales are pulling more and more young people into the Dark One's domain. World politics are steadily progressing toward our one world government. And I left an episode of Bill Nye the Science Guy on three separate people's TVs. <laughs> I am excited to announce that this year more people have decided to be homosexuals than ever before in history. Ah yes, the dark magic has been especially strong this year, gays. Okay, popping up left and right. If we can corrupt just a few more souls at this college, then the stars will be right. 
And when the stars are right, oh shit, uh, uh, he will awaken and revel across the world. Blood dies, blood dies, the end he will give you AIDS. Then you'll go to hell with all the Catholics and Jews and play Magic the Gathering with Satan. So here we meet friends and protagonists, Debbie and Marcy, two devoutly Christian girls who find themselves on a new college campus together, ready to explore college life and spread the good word of the Lord. They head to their college orientation and watch a film on a projector that's as outdated as the beliefs presented in this film. Hey, who are those people? Those are the RPGers. At this juncture, we're introduced to the so-called RPGers. In this world, they're the cool kids on campus. Mm-hmm. Very factual there. Marcy and Debbie are instantly allured. We've been trying to get them thrown off campus for years, but they're just too popular. What's an RPG? You don't need to know. Uh, yeah, I, uh, I, I, I kind of do though. But ignoring Mike's warning against engagement with this radical group. I've seen a lot of students try to dabble with RPGs. Not one has ever stopped. The girls set off to the fraternity of role players in an attempt to convert some of the players to a different way of thinking. Or so they say. Come on, we've got to socialize. I guess you're right. If we don't go to this party, you and I would be spending all Saturday alone together in our dorm room. And how much fun could we have doing that? Not much, I guess. And how much you could do there? What could go wrong? Oh, I'm just leaving. I'm <laughs> right. So after Hansi McGooner's study over here, strong arms Marcy away. They are now whisked into the dark underbelly of the role-playing world. Are you all having a good time? <laughs> I mean, yeah, it was, it's been all right. Well, I know you all like to drink. Hydration is important. Are you ready for the main event? <laughs> yeah. Are you ready to RPG? Yeah. Oh, motherfucker! I was born ready. And let's get ready to RPG! 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 Oh, if you say so! Hello! Wow, that's a very coincidentally coordinated action. Maybe we should go. That senior warned us about playing RPGs. Uh, what does he know? Mike knows nothing. After all, what did he say would happen? Uh, excuse me, who are you? Mike said that once we start, we won't want to stop. That's true of eating, drinking, and... Pringles. Especially the pizza-flavored ones. Oh, look. Here I go again. <laughs> I hope you are not disrespecting Mistress Frost by refusing... Calm down, Nitro. Yes, yeah, seriously, what the fuck? Calm down, dude. Go back to playing Flip Cup, huh? If they want to be a couple of chickens who go their entire lives without experiencing the unrivaled thrill of an RPG, that's their business. We're not chicken. Then prove it by playing. Also, I'm gonna need a DNA sample from each of you and a picture of what you think a chicken is. Just to make sure we're talking about the same thing here. So, the girls fall victim, and the mysterious lady who is definitely college-aged and the correct demographic for role-playing introduces them to their new alter egos. You are Blackleaf. The thief who is to the night as the day is to the shadow. The shadow? The shadow. The shadow. Yeah. Shadow. 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 Heard you. Heard you, heard you first time. Shadow. Got it. Shadow. Got him. You shall be Elf Star, cleric, and possessor of the real power. What is the real power? Yeah, uh, how come, excuse me, uh, why does she get the real power? What is the, what is the real power exactly? It so sounds better whoever I got. Shadow? Yeah, shadow's not as good as real power. Now, let the games begin. And may your roles be ever natural! Huh? Okay. Playing games with an evil witch woman who's definitely college age! Wait, why did that guy just blow smoke out of his face? That's weird. When you die in the game, you die in real life, except you don't. You go back to your dorm and play some GTA 5. Uh huh. Alright, whatever. 
I use magic missile to attack the darkness. Baldric Windy Drawers, defeated and broken at your feet. How shall you slay your defeated foe? Oh, God. We don't have to kill him, do we? No, you could show mercy to your enemy, and all it would cost would be your gold and your weapons. From my cold, dead, gauntlet, dastardly witch! I will slay the helpless foe. I have no mercy. I am chaotic neutral. Excellent RPGing, Debbie. I stab him with a poison dagger! You want it? Huh? You want it? Then take it. Take it! TAKE IT! You know, it was, it was all cool and good, but uh, after that, I just, I, I, I don't think this could be the same anymore. That was the best RPGing I've seen in 15 years. And I'm only 15! Or at least that's what the crack in my brain made my brain say to me. <laughs> what is this shit? So the girls go home and sit on their beds, dreaming about the fun they had earlier in the night. All the while, the Dark Council schemes about their upcoming sacrifice. Can I tell you something? When I started casting spells in the game, I felt something. I don't know what it was. I don't even know how to describe it, but... Keep on trying. You'll get there. I'm strong. See, that wasn't so hard, was it? So, after nights and nights of RPG playing, Debbie's teacher takes note of her failing grades. You know, when you first started here, I thought you were going to be one of the brightest students here, but ever since you involved yourself in those wicked RPGs, your grades have been going down steadily, month by month. RPGs aren't that bad. Spells, poison, battles, maiming, killing? Yeah, but it's all imagination. Is it? Is it, Debbie? Well, I suggest you read a totally real book that has absolutely no poisoning, maiming, or killing in it called the Holy Bible. It oh no. When that, that book got that book done, God damn it. Quit the RPGs, Debbie. It's your only hope. But predictably, not heeding her professor's advice, she decides to go back in for one final game and discovers she is ready to receive the true power. Your cleric has been raised to the eighth level. I think it's time you really learn to cast spells. Do you think you can maybe back up a bit? I brought Elstar to become a priestess and witch. Yes, both of those things for some reason. Nobody. Wait, hold on, that, that's what RPGing does? That's what it gives you? Well, that's fucking awesome, I gotta get on that right now! So Debbie uses her newfound real powers to get an A-plus on her paper. Oh, and now she dresses like Morticia Adams, by the way. And some weird shit like this goes down. I think your hands are perfect for spell casting. So delicate and small. Ew. Hello, Mistress Frost. Enough chit-chatting. We have important matters to discuss. The evil undead Lich Zykon is attempting to reach the gate. Um, Mistress Frost? Yeah, I'm gonna let you finish Elvira Mistress in the Dark. It's all good about the evil Lich, but first check out my high score in Flappy Bird. I still love the game, but it doesn't have the same kick it used to have, you know? I could go for some stronger stuff. Then it is time for L A R. P. What's that? Yeah. What's that? Live action role playing. Watch your thunderbolt. Uh, Three thousand and a critical. Thunder Dark shot. out critical. Thunder. Thunder. Thy arts are slain. Though you have gained many skills through your RPG. LARPing will tax them as they've never been taxed before. Who are you? Uh, I'm Marcy. No! I mean literally, who are you? I have a very short-term memory. I'm Blackleaf, the Thief of the Shadows. Sick and voice. So now the dungeon mistress, Mrs. Frost, is prepping the girls for live-action role-playing. She explains that they can never break character, or else suffer the wrath of forever losing their privilege to play RPGs with her! No, that would be a truly unbearable fate! You come across this in your quest. It appears to be some kind of Arabic. Yes, one of the many varieties. Wait, Marcy, didn't you learn Arabic? You needed it to convert the Muslims, who didn't realize they were actually worshipping the moon god. I ain't even... I ain't even going near that. I'm not sure I should. Marcy, we need to get you to level eight. Read it. Anastoltira alentithor abduwalbi marul al hokab hatel miat kajufna. Salagadu la mechikabu la bibbidi babbidi boo. Put them together, and what have you got? Bibbidi babbidi boo. 
I think it means something is not dead, which has the capacity to exist eternally. Eh, just admit it, you put that shit in Google Translate when we weren't looking, didn't you? And if the abnormal duration comes, then death might cease. What on earth does that mean? That is not dead! <laughs> For God's sake, would y'all quit that shit? And it's Cthulhu! Of course it's Cthulhu! Who else would it be? We got Cthulhu! Mistress Frost, the Dark One requires a sacrifice if he is to fully rise. Why is she using a walkie-talkie? Aren't they demons? Can't they speak to each other through brain? And since when has she got an earpiece on? I mean, these are a bunch of well-coordinated techie demigods, I'll tell you that much. I can easily take care of that. No. The Dark One needs one of them to take her own life. Actually, McDougal back here says we all get a free Egg McMuffin if you do the slaying yourself, so... You know what to do. You know what, actually, it's probably not the greatest idea to piss off Cthulhu Lord of Darkness for the McDonald's breakfast menu. So, oh uh, uh, yeah, abort mission, actually. Hey, you know what, fuck it. McMuffin's all around, let's get this party started! Yeah! You travel deep, deep down your path where you encounter the zombie. I shall decapitate the fiend. You encounter... Kissow, Kissow, Wilson. Who now? Uh, excuse me, excuse, excuse me, what, what's, what's my one again? I am Diamond. How are you doing that with your voice? That is not an adequate answer to my question. I am Legion. <gasps> Stop that right now! If you act, you will be breaking character. Oh god, anything but that! So, Debbie comes to the conclusion that she must betray Marcy as not to break her character. And Marcy is declared dead from the game. Marcy, get out of here. You're dead. You don't exist anymore. But... So just walk away. My god. This is gonna be really awkward when they get home into their dorm tonight. <gasps> no! Oh yeah, that's awkward. Marcy. You didn't have to do that. Yeah! No, like, I mean, you really didn't. This whole thing wasn't really a big deal, honestly. It's my fault Blackleaf died. I can't face life alone. So yes, Marcy fucking actually hangs herself over Exile from the RPG. And well, uh, fun fact about this frame, it's actually ripped straight from the original Chick Tract, right down to the formatting and the font of the text. Now that's how you do an adaptation. Take note of that, Dragon Ball. Evolution, you f fucking anomalous wretch in need of euthanization. I can't get Marcy out of my mind. How could she do something like this? It would have happened sooner or later. All she was good for was reading the Necronomicon and summoning Cthulhu. Yeah, come on, that's it. That's all she was good for. Being upset that she caused her friend to commit suicide, as one does, Debbie gets even more fired up and plays right into the hands of Mrs. Frost. So logically, she goes into the nearby steam tunnels and starts casting spells at bat sounds. And also she encounters a poo-poo monster that tries to eat her. I don't want to be eaten! Oh, I feel that! Debbie, why don't you just give up? Oh gosh, the ghost of Marcy is back! It's a miracle! It's your fault. I'm dead. Okay, even if that were true, little subtlety take you a long way. Oh, Marcy, I'm so sorry. Why don't you come join me? I will, Marcy. I will. In hell. It's one big party, and all your friends will be there. Oh, yeah? Well, that sounds an awful lot like what a disguised Satan would say. God, help me. Hey, Debbie, what's wrong? Well, it's a bit of a long story. Uh, has your friend ever hung herself because you killed her character in Dungeons and Dragons? Evil without end is about to descend upon the works of man. But none of my RPG tomes have the answer how to stop it. Been there, girlfriend. Debbie, I told you. <laughs> Jesus is the only answer. Using RPGs to fight evil will never work. <laughs> because RPGs are evil, Debbie. Amen! So now with the help of Deus Ex Machina Mike, Debbie is taken to the one man who can help her rid herself of the evils that now infest her soul because of the tabletop dungeon crawler! 
The local pastry. I mean, the local pastor. Hey, could have fooled me. Only difference I see between two is one of them's real yummy. You know what I'm saying? Jesus sets us free from the bondage of witchcraft. Gather up all of your occult paraphernalia. The rock music, occult books, including those by C.S. Lewis and J.R.R. Tolkien. Although I will be given a pass on the works of George R. R. Martin, because fuck me, Jon Snow is just a total goddamn heartthrob, and you know it. If you doubt the occult nature of these books, just take a look here. No kid should be going through a wardrobe into a winter wonderland having dialogue with a talking lion! That should be motherfucking witchcraft! But don't just throw them away. Burn them. Yes, burn them. The smaller the chance of an unbiased, peer-reviewed study, the better. I need help. My life's a mess. Help me. So Debbie gives in to the power of the Lord and asks to be absolved of her inner demons. Debbie! Think of what you would be giving up. Who? For what you do you done. really want to lose all your weapons and gold? Debbie, for God's sake, the man is speaking reason. Listen to me. You are nothing without the game! Don't All right, cool it. Jesus, I repent. I want you to be in charge of everything, not that lousy RPG manual. Hey, you watch what you're saying about a manual. He's pretty cool. Now, back at base, the demon computing systems are going off the charts because Debbie renounced her role-playing character. The stars are no longer right. Why are the stars no longer right? The systems are malfunctioning. John is clocking in at a whopping 319! What did you do? I see you, Cthulhu. Uh, nice to know you. Nice to see you. Uh, abba, 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 what the fuck is this? And so with that, balance is restored. And Whoa! Holy crap! Was that necessary? Okay. And the film ends, how else, but with a mass book burning. Beautiful. Thank you, Lord, for setting me free. That is word for word how the comic strip goes, and it even makes mention to the specific works of C.S. Lewis and J.R.R. Tolkien, which makes it so much better that it's actually in the movie. Now, you can argue that this movie didn't take this or these topics seriously, but the writer of the original work did, and this is a true adaptation. So that makes this movie legit, and that's all that matters to me. So everyone, thank you for going on this wonderful journey with me. Good night, and God Bless America's secular society. Yeah, maybe? I don't know. You guys want to see a cool sword trick? No. <laughs> oh, crap. So, yes, a big thanks to Audible.com for sponsoring this episode of JonTron. Without them, this wouldn't be possible. If you don't know about Audible, they are the premier provider of audiobooks and audio products. You can take it on your phone, tablet, or a computer, anywhere you want. It's pretty great. If you use my specialized link, audible.com slash JonTron, you can get a free 30-day trial and a free audiobook. And by the way, uh, you keep the free audiobook even if you don't renew the service. So that's pretty cool. This month, I recommend to you Time of Contempt by Andre Sapkowski, narrated by Peter Kenny. Now, if you don't know about this series of books, it's actually the books that inspired the Witcher games. So if you want to follow a monster slaying adventure with Geralt, Yennefer, and Ciri, then pick up this free 30-day trial now. I'm out, and thanks for watching. By the way, guys, if you enjoyed the film, you can go to their website, darkdungeonsthemovie.com, and buy it for $5 or more if you choose. It comes in full HD and it's DRM free. I'm not affiliated with the movie in any way, just wanted to throw some support their way for the entertainment they provided us. All right, thanks everyone. See you next time.